Today, I'm going to show all of you how to program these strange bouncy balls in C using the Cairo and Xlib libraries. Cairo is a lowish level graphics, like a Canvas API for the C programming language. So it allows you to draw like arcs and shapes and whatnot onto a bunch of different surfaces. And one of the supported surface types is the Xlib surface. Xlib is another C library and it's a windowing library, which means it allows you to start up little windows and stuff like that in C. So we're gonna be using Cairo to draw onto these windows and create cool little dynamic animations like these bouncy balls that you see here. So let's get started. First things first, because we're working in C, we're gonna go ahead and create a make file just like this. And then we also want to have a GCC. We're gonna call it anything balls.c. And we're gonna put to this, and we're gonna have some sort of C flags. And I'll set that in just a minute here. I also wanna create balls.c so that way, not calls, balls.c so that way we don't forget to create it when we do the make file. And so we're gonna have a number of C flags and libraries that we want to include with our executable here. So I'm gonna quickly list them off real quick. For our C flags, we wanna include user include Cairo, user include glib 2.0, include user lib. This is some other glib stuff. It's specific for me because I have like, I'm running on Linux x64, a 64-bit Linux operating system essentially. So if you guys are on a different computer, some of the stuff might be a bit different. That's just the nature of these low-level C libraries that we're working with. And I'm also gonna include Pixman 1, I'm gonna include FreeType, and I'm gonna include libpng12. I don't necessarily think I use these in my own code, but I think some of the dependencies require that I include these just to find the right header files. And as for the libraries I'm going to be including at compile time, we have Cairo, X11, X extension, I guess is what EXT stands for, X render, and math. So let's actually also go ahead and include the libraries right there. And when you're compiling with GCC, make sure that you have your includes and your library dependencies come after the files that use them. Because if you have all your dependencies like over here, then it says, okay, grab all the dependencies and only include the parts of them that we need. But since you haven't called anything, you haven't called your balls.c or whatever just yet, it doesn't think you need any dependencies. So, you know, make sure you always put them after all the files that you want to compile with. So now I'm going to go ahead and include everything we have here and a few extra standard libraries that we're going to be needing. Now, let's go ahead and define some sort of width and height for our window here. And let's go ahead and create a struct for our ball class. X, Y, mass, radius, and velocity X and velocity Y. Because I wanna give it a sort of dynamic physics-based interaction model here. So we're gonna go ahead and try to make it sort of realistic, at least somewhat. And we're going to create an array full of them. And you know what? Let's go ahead and define this as we'll set that to like eight. So we're gonna have eight balls bouncing around here and I misspelled struct. There we go. So we're going to have some function that will init all of these. So we're gonna say balls8.x equals rand and you'll see we'll have to call the random seed at some point of the function. I'll do that when we get to the main function. So we're gonna set x and y. We're gonna set the radius and why not set the mass to basically the same range here and then let's see what else do we have to set we have to set vx and vy initially so i don't know how fast we want to make these so i'm going to go ahead and say anywhere between positive and negative 200 for you know velocity x and velocity y Okay, so now let's go on to creating the main function. We're gonna create argc and argv. And like I said before, we're gonna do srans time null. So make sure you've gone and included time.h because that way it'll, you know, use the current time as the seed for the random, pseudo random number generator. And now we want to go ahead and use xlib to open up a little window here. So if you just do all this code, 
what we have is set a display x open display null so that's just the default and we're going to go ahead and get the screen default screen of that display and then we're going to get a visual from the display and the screen and after we've done all of that we can create a simple window using the default root window from display using display and we're going to give it width and height and then a bunch of zeros here because that's just like the default we don't need to worry about those for right now so just like give it width and height like what we've defined all the way up here and then you can go ahead and say map window d to drawable draw so this draw thing is what's going to allow us we're going to use that to connect our xlib calls into the cairo api and we do that by calling all of this i'm actually going to segment this so we have all our x11 calls all our cairo calls and then everything else after that so we want to create a cairo surface in the Cairo API, they have, you could think of it sort of like an interface. So they have surfaces and there's a surface implementation for each windowing library that Cairo allows you to draw on. There's also an implementation, I think just for drawing to like PNG files, which is probably why we have to include libpng if we want to use Cairo. So anyway, you can create a Cairo xlib specific surface using this command right here. We're gonna pass in our display, our simple drawable window, our visual, and then the width and height. And then we can set the size of the surface just to make sure it's got it correct, width and height. And then we're going to create what is essentially a little canvas, and we're gonna create this surface right here. Now, we wanna get a main loop going. So what I'm gonna say is, here I'm gonna draw. So I'm gonna have a loop function, and we'll explain this in just a minute. But basically after the loop's all done, we want to wait for like two seconds, just cause. And then we're gonna go ahead and destroy the Cairo surface, destroy the Cairo instance, and then close that xlib display. And that's how we're gonna deallocate everything. And then we'll just go ahead and return zero. Oh, and I almost forgot we have to call init on our balls right here, right before we start this loop. Oh, and then as we're calling you sleep here, because this is going to be the main loop. So we're going to call you sleep and then just we're going to give it weight, right? And I'm going to go back up here and define weight and we'll say 5,000, 5,000 nanoseconds for sleeping. Sorry, 5,000 milliseconds. OK, so let's go ahead and define this little loop function here. And we don't really need to be visible outside of the actual file, so we're going to call it static. So in each frame here, we want to, we're going to make a few Cairo calls. So we're going to push the CR group and actually let me just make sure I know which parameters we're going to have for this thing here. So we have a CR and we have a draw. So it's a Cairo instance and then our draw is a drawable. So the way Cairo has to work is we have to push the Cairo group onto, it's sort of stack based. So we're gonna push it on there, which tells Cairo that we're working with this instance specifically right now. Now we're gonna set the RGB of like the next fill command to 111, which means we're gonna draw it all black. And then we're gonna just do Cairo paint on the entire instance. So this is gonna create a totally black screen for us. And then we're gonna go ahead Sorry, it's going to create an entirely white screen for us. I, you know, for someone who works with like hex values and RGB values all the time, I really get white and black confused a whole lot. Anyway, after we set it to be all white, not black, then we're going to set it to be black and then we're going to be able to draw our balls bouncing around the screen nice and big and black. And then once we've drawn all those to sort of undo this process up here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to push this group into the source. We're going to go ahead and paint it and then we're going to flush it to the surface. So the way Cairo works is as you're painting to a Cairo instance, it's sort of buffered. And then you can tell that buffer to flush and you push it to the actual surface. And that's just something Cairo does for like much better optimization. So we're going to go ahead and do that as well because that's the way you work in Cairo. And we're gonna go ahead and say int a equals zero, a is less than, 
the number of balls a plus plus yeah get out of there and we're gonna do a Cairo arc actually yeah so this is gonna draw us our circle it's similar to like HTML5 canvas API I'm pretty sure that API was based on Cairo uh, so we're gonna go ahead and pass in the Cairo instance we're going to define the central point for it we're gonna find the radius it's gonna start at zero and it's gonna go until m pi times two which basically means we're gonna create a full circle here and why did I do that there we go and then we're gonna go ahead and call Cairo fill on that last sort of call that we've pushed onto our little Cairo instance here. I don't know if I've beaten this horse dead yet, but Cairo is pretty stack based. Now I know loop has a integer return type. I'm not returning anything yet. So let's go ahead and fix that because what I want to do here is have, yes, a second frame function. So <laughs> this main loop thing, I don't know why I called it loop, but this is gonna handle the drawing. But first it's gonna call our actual like update state function. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, so when I have update, what I want to give it as a parameter is a double, which is the, it's gonna represent how much time has elapsed since the last state update in terms of seconds. So since our weight is defined in milliseconds, we're gonna divide that by one times 10 to the negative six, or sorry, one times 10 to the six, so that way it will end up being in seconds. And then we're just gonna return, you know, whatever update returns. So let's go ahead and define update real quick. With a double DT. And once we fill this out, we should have the entire program up and ready to go. Okay. And so what I'm basically gonna do here is loop over for every ball, it's gonna look at every other one for yes, like n choose two. Uh, so that's why I'm keeping the number of balls pretty low. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste in this monstrosity here. So basically what all this code is gonna do is this part up here is gonna say if the two balls are like, if the ensnaring rectangles around them are actually touching each other, then you can go ahead and calculate distance between their centers. Because this is a much more expensive computation than this. So this will give us a heuristic to see if they're too far apart, don't even, you know they're not, you know, colliding, so don't even check. Because what we want is for these balls to exert a force on each other if they're colliding as they're bouncing around the screen. And if they are, then you know, like calculate the angle between them, calculate some magnitude of force, and just apply all that to their velocities and whatnot. Just simple physics stuff. And so once we calculate the effect every ball will have on every other one, what we can do is go down to, yeah, here. And then, so this is back in every ball on its own. And we're gonna calculate the friction each one feels because we don't want these guys accelerating to like infinite speeds because that would just be crazy. So this is gonna be friction and this is going to be bounce. We'll call it that. Yeah, that sounds good. Bounce, there we go. So bounce and friction. I'm gonna pause the screen here right now so that way you guys can just copy whatever friction equations you need to because this stuff's pretty weird. So now that you're done with all that, you might notice we have min here, which is a little weird. I haven't defined this necessarily. But essentially what we want is, let me just put this right here. This is gonna be our return value. So we want to get at any frame the slowest, I really don't know why I called it min, it really should be max. Okay, so what we wanna do is get the fastest moving ball. And if it is not moving, meaning none of them are moving, so if the entire simulation is stopped, then we're gonna go ahead and return true through this, which gets filtered down to this. And actually, you know what? Um, yes, yeah, that's what we want. So as long as at least one of the balls is moving, the simulation will go on. But once they've all stopped, we will just close everything down. So that's how this is gonna work. So let me go ahead and define max while I'm still thinking about it. There we go. And I just realized I made a mistake in the definition of ball. These should all be doubles, not integers. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and make this and see how it works. So we're gonna go ahead and call make here real quick. What? 
Okay, let's check this out. Let's debug. Five, you're missing something. Um, Alright, we'll just try this. Okay, yeah, there we go. First off, surface is undeclared, so let's go see if we can fix that. On line 86. Surface, where should I have declared surface? Oh, here we go. It should be the drawable. Yeah, so this actually just be a Cairo surface T. We're gonna call you surface. Actually, you should be a pointer. And let's go back and fix where we actually call loop from. And here we go, surface. Let's go ahead and make again. And okay, so that's working, we're gonna call balls. And what do you know, we've got it working perfectly. Actually, that's pretty good. Look at them balls. Now, because black and white is boring and I love colors so much, let's see if we can make it just a little bit more interesting. Okay, and that is how you animate a bunch of dynamically bouncing balls using the Cairo and Xlib libraries in the C programming language. Hopefully you all enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please consider giving a like, share, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Click the notification bell so that way you never miss out on a new video. All of that good YouTube stuff. If you have a cool idea for a little visualization or a project or any technology that you want me to cover, just go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. I love getting comments from you guys and I love hearing your thoughts about the different projects that I do. That's all I've got for this week, so thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.